Welcome to Lab 4, Android Studio Development. This is the Emerization Calculator Lab. The overview of lab tasks. We're going to start out with uh, the quick start. Step through the quick start for the Emerization Calculator app. We'll create a new project, set up the details. We'll look at the UI design, the UI structure, UI uh, loan amount, right? So we're going to be looking at each one of these rows, right? And creating them. This is the schedule area and then the buttons. So we'll do the payment area, the buttons, and we'll run the project. Now, <clears throat> let me explain first what an amortization schedule is and what it's used for. When you want to uh, get a loan, a personal loan, car loan, or a house loan, uh, and let's say you want to know some details about the loan. So if you wanted to uh, get a loan for say $10,000, um, you could uh, find out um, the interest that is on that loan, and you could say, well, let's see what it would be at five years or six years. And uh, by putting in the loan amount, and you could put in the loan amount of, you know, say $10,000, and you could put in five years, and you could put in 6%. It would then calculate the payment, and then it would give you the schedule month by month showing the amount of interest and principal for the life of the loan. And that's the whole purpose of an amortization schedule calculator is so that you can calculate uh, what each month, I mean that doesn't change, the payment amount doesn't change and that's uh, kind of a fixed amount, but you'll be able to determine the amount of interest and principal that is being uh, applied to the loan. So in this lab we just want to create the UI uh, for it. So we're going to open up the Android Studio, we're going to go through the quick start very similar to what we've done to create a new Android Studio project. So let's uh, bounce over to the Android Studio. We're going to say start a new Android Studio project. And uh, for this one, we'll call it Amortization Schedule. Well, we'll call it Calculator. Amortization Calculator. And I'm just going to call it OPE. Make sure you put in your company uh, domain, use what we've been using, ist402psu.edu, and just hit next. Again, we'll target 4.4 uh, KitKat, phone and tablet. We'll start out with a blank activity, and uh, we're going to change the title so that it shows amortization cap. Calculator. Oak. Okay. Looks good. Then uh, hit finish. And give it a second. Okay, great. So now if we look at the design, we will see it says hello world, and that's really not what we want. So the first order of business is to re remove the text view that says hello world. So we'll remove that. All right, let's catch up in the uh, in the lecture here. So we created uh, the application and we went through the quick start and we did all the project details. We targeted KitKat, blank activity, gave it a title, right? Similar to what we've been doing in the previous labs. Now the UI design, what we want to do is think about what is the best layout to use for um, our application. So when we look at our application, um, I think a table uh, layout would work pretty nice. And then I could make each one of these a table row, right? So we could have a table row, table row, table row, table row for the uh, schedule here, and then the table row for the buttons. So I think a table row would work great for this activity structure. Then, or sorry, the table layout. Then the table rows will work well for uh, organizing our input and our labels. So we have 
Uh, these on the left hand side and the right hand side are our labels and in the center uh, is where we're going to have uh, all the user input. The uh, text view will be our labels to describe the UI. The edit text will be user input values and then the buttons will handle user behaviors which are down here submit and clear. Let's create the basic structure. So the first thing we want to do is just lay out the table and the rows for each one. and be very descriptive with your comments. Notice I put in a comment here, an HTML comment um, in the XML that just says table, table one loan amount, table two loan term, All right? To keep it very organized so that you know this is all gonna be the loan amount row, this is gonna be the loan term row, and that works out really nice. So row one, right, loan amount, row two, loan term, row three, interest, row four, payment, row five, schedule, row six will be buttons. Okay, great. So uh, let's put that in. And uh, I already have it uh, created. And in the interest of time, um, I'm going to uh, just paste it in. Uh, but if you want to pause the video and put it in, that would be great. So inside of the relative layout, I pasted in my table layout. I have all my table rows, one, two, three, four. Now, if you go to the design, you won't see anything on here. Um, if you open this up, you will see your six over here in the component tree. You'll see the six table rows um, over here. Uh, but it, we just I just put it inside of a relative layout, but we won't actually see anything uh, displayed yet. All right, so uh, the next thing, we've got our structure laid out. Now let's start putting some content. And we're going to put three columns uh, in there. So if we were to kind of look those columns on our row, this one would be our first column, second column, and then the text view will be our third column. So it's going to have a three column structure uh, for that. So the text view, when we look at it, the text view, we don't really care about the uh, ID uh, for the text view. It just says text view one. It doesn't really matter that it's not descriptive. What does matter is this one, the loan amount, because in the code behind, in the Java uh, code that we write, we're going to be referencing it by that, uh, uh, by the identifier uh, that we set up. So the identifier, uh, this one here, the uh, ID loan amount edit text, that's very important. This string here that we're looking at, this is just going to go to the strings file, uh, which I'm going to show you in a second. All right, so let's put those in there. And again, in the interest of time, I have uh, all that ready to go. We'll go back over and inside. Make sure you are inside the first table row. 
So I'm inside that table row, all right, and that's uh, oops, that's where you want to um, put in, okay. So I put in uh, a text view, all right, and the first text view, you notice it's in red, so that there's a problem there. When something is in the color red, that means it's trying to get our attention that we need to do something about it. And the same with string dollar. String dollars, um, we have to uh, use this strings file to get the uh, display value. And we use this for supporting multiple languages. So if you go under values, you'll see a file called strings. So you want to open that up. And in that strings file, what we want to do is add a loan amount and also add dollars. Okay, so uh, we're going to need both of those, right, uh, for that. So the first one is going to be loan amount. All right, so if we go over there, I'm going to put in loan amount. And uh, let's show you what's going to happen here. So this is just basically a resources file lookup. So uh, we could have multiple string files. This one is for English, and we would have another strings file that would look very similar to this, say for French. What would be different would be this. The loan amount here uh, that is displayed, you would put the French equivalent of uh, whatever loan amount would be. This name would still be the same. So if the application is running in French, still looks up loan amount, but then gets a different value based off that setting of French. Um, okay, good. So we have that in there. We need to do the dollars now. So we'll put in dollars, save your work, hit control S, and also over here, hit control S, go to design, looks good. I see loan amount, I see, so I've got uh, three columns with two labels, loan amount and dollars. And uh, that looks pretty good. All right, so we, uh, we added the two string values. <clears throat> now we're gonna move on to the row two, which is the loan term. All right, so for the loan term, um, if we just kind of look at this, uh, it's, what we want to look at is that we're going to put a text view on there, just our label. It's going to have a string value. The edit text, this is going to be the loan, loan term edit text ID. Uh, make sure that we set gravity to be center. Um, the input type will be a number, right? So make sure that we do that. Um, on the one previous, uh, we we used a number decimal. So the difference being number decimal supports decimal places uh, for row one. So when we looked at the loan amount, that can have uh, decimal places, whereas the next, the loan term, which is the number of years, um, we're, we're only going to support, uh, you know, uh, like integer values. So <clears throat> this isn't too bad. We're going to put a text view, an edit text, and again another text view uh, on on the uh, UI. So let's go uh, over, go to our text editor, find row two. I see it's right there. Inside of table row is where you want to uh, start to put. Uh, the next row. And we'll uh, put that in. Okay, so now we added the loan term, which is right. We got the loan term and the number of years. So in the strings file, we also have to uh, do the same and, and add that. And we'll do the loan term and the number of years. And save that. That looks good. Nothing's in red. I like it. So save it. And then look at your design. And now we have loan term years. Good. So we have, uh, we have row two is complete. Now let's move on to uh, row three. So row three is the interest, 
and the interest for this row we're going to have another table view widget edit text and a text view so uh, for this it shouldn't be too bad let's uh, let me get the row three and then we'll review it go back in the text find table row three I found it inside and be careful about when you're working make sure you're inside of that enveloped table row so I put in this is the interest row it looks good I've got my interest and now for the interest I set the input type of the edit text box to be a number decimal so it's gonna be a floating point and I set the gravity to be center and the text size again to be 14 and uh, you just make sure you give it an ID uh, loan interest edit text so that we can reference it in the Java code behind okay so save your work go over to the strings file now we have to add the next two values for the strings file and let's see we're on interest and percent okay so now we have interest and percent so here you can see the name is percent but what we're going to display is just a percent sign good so let's check our work again go to design looks pretty good we've got row three complete let's move on to row four row four is the UI payment so uh, we want to put in the payment it's against three columns, text view, edit text, text view, pretty similar to what we've been doing. All right, so we're on row four. Go back to text view, find row four inside. We'll put in the text view for the payment label and the amount label. The edit text, really uh, the two things you need to worry about, make sure loan payment edit text is set, uh, set right, right there. And make sure it's a number decimal so it can accept decimal places and make sure it's centered. Let's put in the payment and the amount in the strings file. Okay, so we've uh, we've been adding a lot here to the strings file. We put in the loan amount, the dollars, the loan term, the years, the interest, uh, the per the percent, the payment, and now the amount. So save your work. All right, go over here and uh, um, let's, let's oh boy. All right, so let's get out of that and then save your work. All right okay good so let's go over um, to the XML look at our design that looks pretty good okay and you can open up and see uh, what's inside All right. so if you want it to uh, see that you can All right over here alright so we have two more rows left uh, and then we'll be done so let's go back to text and we have row 5 which isn't too bad and then row 6 which will just be our buttons so for row 5 it's just gonna be uh, a multi-line and uh, for row 5 we'll use an edit text so if you go to row 5 table row 5 You'll see that uh, what I did, I told it to span across, right? Span across these three. So the label, label, and then the user input. Okay. <clears throat> the 
then uh, I gave it an ID. Um, I set it for text multi-line because we're going to have multiple lines. And I set auto text to be false. Okay, and all that's really going to do uh, when we look at it, it's just going to draw a line going across. Okay, so we have where the schedule is going uh, to be printed. And now we need to add um, some buttons. So we'll put two buttons on there and uh, go down here. We're on row six. You can see I added two buttons, a submit and a clear. All right, so if we go over to the lecture, let's catch up. Um, we did row five, which was just one edit text. It was a multi-line. Um, and we set it to span over three columns. The next area we're working on right now is the buttons. So we're going to have a submit button and a clear button. All right. And make sure you give them IDs so they can be identified. Submit button and clear button. And we're going to use the strings file so that if we wanted to show a different language, we could on those buttons uh, for content. Okay, so uh, let's go over there, and uh, we put the buttons on there. That looks good. And what we need to do now is put in in the strings. All right, we're gonna save that. So we added the submit and the clear. Uh, so that it can uh, be uh, translated if needed. Okay, so uh, that's nice. They're not in red anymore. We save those, and uh, let's take a look at the. Uh, oops, let's take a look at the UI. Go to design, and it looks pretty good. That's where we want to be. So let's try and uh, try to run it and make sure that it works. And we should be pretty much done. Um, we're just going to run it. But one thing I want to make mention of is that if you make any mistakes in the uh, text area when you're doing this, remember it's building this java.r file, which is the resources file, dynamically. So all of the XML that we put in, as we do that, it builds this Java.
R file. And if you make any mistakes, then it can't build the Java R file and you can't compile and run your program. And, you know, that, that can happen. So you really want to make sure that you don't have anything in red in your, um, you know, in the text here. So just kind of keep an eye on it. So let's try to run it and uh, make sure that it works. So we're starting up the emulator. It should prompt me in a second for do I want to select a device or a virtual device. And I do. I'm just going to select Jelly Bean. I'm going to say OK. It's going to launch the emulator. And the emulator starting up. Remember to slide the lock off uh, so that it can uh, actually run your application. Remember, there's no code behind this. We didn't put any Java code in. So uh, it's not going to do really anything except for display the user interface. And it looks pretty good. Um, we can see the user interface. Um, we can uh, actually, we should be able to click on it, click on the values, and the keypad pops up. We can't really click on the buttons because there's no, nothing behind the code, but we're ready to go for Lab 5, which will be where we put the code behind it. I hope you guys enjoyed this lab. Great, thanks.